Hello everyone, I'm Tina Zhang from Intel Virtualization Team. In this session, my colleague Vivek and I are going to present a solution that combines a pass-through GPU with a parallel virtualization-based display to achieve a scale buffer zero copy goal. Although the implementation is specific to GPU or display virtualization, the idea behind it is generic. It is considered that the solution can be leveraged by other kinds of pass-through devices, which have the similar requirement to share a cross-domain DM buff. Okay, then let's get started. This is the disclaimers. Here is the agenda. We have four parts here. I'll cover the first two parts, which are about the motivation and the background introduction, as well as the architecture design. My colleague Will App will present the implementation details and do a summary. Let's start with the multi GPU platform introduction. So, a multi GPU platform basically means there is more than one GPU provided. If a platform has two GPUs, usually one of them can provide better performance, but may need more power to consume. And the other one, which might be designed as an integrated GPU, may not have the capability to provide the same performance as the powerful one can provide, but it may not need so much power as the powerful one needs to do display or rendering. So in this way, a multi-GPU platform can give user more choices about power and the performance balancing. There is a use case in cloud virtualization field that with multi-GPU support, a powerful pass-through GPU is provided to a virtual machine to accelerate the 3D applications running within the virtualization environment. Meanwhile, let the integrated GPU work for display so that every application, no matter running in guest or host, can be displayed on the monitor controlled by the host integrated GPU. Such a system can provide good power and performance benefits for users. Sharing guest scale-out buffers between pass-through GPU and the integrated GPU is one of the key requirements in such a system. CPU copy might not be ac accept acceptable here as it impacts too much user experience. Unnecessary GPU copy isn't good for system power saving. So it's considered that sharing scale buffers is a must here. Since scale buffer is basically a kind of DM buff, we see that a cross domain DM buff sharing mechanism is needed in such a system. But sharing DM buff owned by a password device is challenging. First of all, Hyperweather has no visibility of a password device's DM buff resource. Another challenge is that a DM buff might be allocated in a password device's private local memory, which may not be accessible to other devices. So in short, due to lacking of virtualization knowledge, a pass-through device may not be able to share its DM buff. Since it might not be feasible for a pass-through device to export its DM buff to a other device on host, a parallel virtualization-based DM buff exporter is proposed. The essential idea of the PA-based DM buff exporter is illustrated in this picture. The PV front end works as a DM across domain DM buff owner and uh, has it has its DM buff backed by guest pages. That's important because in this way we can make sure that a shared DM buff is located in a place where it can be shared. Then after the PV front end exposes a DM buff, the pass through GPU driver imports the DM buff for rendering. At last, 
the DM buff gets returned to the PV front end for display. Similar to the front end, the PV backend works as a DM buff exporter on the host side. It creates a DM buff using related information in the metadata passed by the front end and exports the DM buff to the host, host side. Last but not least, the PV based DM buff exporter must support a buffer producer consumer synchronization mechanism. VDM buff was our first try to implement this solution. Although it can work, it introduced a set of new ABIs, which may need to add much code change to the user space graphics stack in order to be used. At that time, we got good advice from upstream communities that Brave GPU already has the cross domain buffer sharing support and uh, can be used to and can be easy to use. Besides, as a virtual GPU device, Brave GPU has already been supported by the user space graphics stack. So we decided to choose Brave GPU. Here is the high level design picture. In this picture, you can see that with a portable GPU and a pass-through GPU, from the guest point of view, it's like a multi-GPU use case. Or if the portable GPU is working in 2D only mode, then it's portable GPU display plus pass-through GPU run only case. Both of the two cases are supported by Linux user space graphics stack. And no matter which case it is, the idea is the same. User space GPU driver is in charge of graphics buffer allocation. It understands which buffer is a scan of buffer. So code change is added to the pass through GPU user space driver to make sure that a scan of buffer is located through the Ohio GPU front. And after the allocation, with the help of user space driver, the scan of buffer is exported as a DM buff and get imported to the pass through GPU driver where it can be rendered. At last, the buffer is committed to the Ohio GPU front for display. The Ohio GPU front pass the, passes the metadata of this uh, scale buffer to its backend, where a host DM buff is exposed to the host world based on the information in the metadata. So there is no buffer copy here. At last, with the help of host display server and the user space graphics stack, the scan buffer is imported into the host GPU driver where the scan buffer can be displayed. In that way, the zero copy goal is achieved. Okay, I'll stop here and let my colleague Vivek carry on the remaining parts. Hi, Vivek. You can start to present. Thank you, Tina. Hi, uh, my name is Vivek Kassaradi. I am a graphics software engineer at Intel. Today, I'll be talking about um, some of the performance issues we play, we um, uh, encountered with Vertio GPU and also a bit about Kimo UI. So just a bit of a back, background in terms of uh, why we are pursuing these. Um, so, um, there are more headless GPUs that are going to be available in the next few months, uh, particularly the, the STV platform and also SRIV VFs. So the headless GPU use case would be, would become mainstream given, uh, given these impending, uh, releases. So when we started working on Vertio GPU, we noticed that there was uh, at least one CPU copy and a couple of uh, GPU copies that were done uh, as the 
guest frame buffer data was transferred from the guest to the host. So when we looked around to see what options are available to eliminate these copies and improve performance, um, uh, we found that the uh, the concept of blob resources was already there added to the spec. Uh, it was particularly a collaboration between Jared Hoffman, who is the whatever GPU at KMUI maintainer and all and um, cross VM uh, developers. So, um, so, but the patches were not integrated. They were just in a RFC form and um, alpha form. So we took a look at those patches and uh, made some improvements and uh, added some more um, changes to them and finally got them merged. Um, so that's the status in terms of uh, those patches. Um, a little bit more about blob resources. <clears throat> so the concept or the idea behind the blob resources feature is uh, <clears throat> is actually uh, related to the the DMA buff uh, share, buffer sharing frameworks, particularly on uh, with Linux operating system. So um, the, the DMA buff makes it possible to uh, to associate a file descriptor with any buffer that can be shared between user space and kernel space or any drivers uh, for that matter. So before this feature was merged, uh, the data associated with the resource, which is actually the frame buffer was mem copied from the IOVEC to the shadow buffer on, on the host. And then a texture was created. But after merging this feature, we can actually associate an FD a DMA buff FD with the frame buffer or the resource and uh, create a texture from that. So um, we also um, um, added support for um, uh, for mapping uh, huge pages to the UDMA buff driver, which is the centerpiece of this uh, whole thing, which I'll be talking about a little bit more in the next few slides. Um, so just a pictorial representation of uh, how things work. As you can see, the KMS RO framework is uh, also one of the key components here. It enables the uh, enables the compositor to create uh, scan out buffers via the Vertio GPU DRM driver, but the rendering can be done or the temporary buffers can be created via the DRM driver. So once that happens, um, the buffer is passed on to uh, the Vertio GPU device on Kimu, which then forwards it to the UI module and um, ui is the one which uh, which actually um, renders the the guest frame buffer onto its own buffer and then finally submits to the host compositor for display uh, i'll i'll also talk a little bit more about these components in the next few slides so one main challenge that we encountered as we implemented this feature is that um, there is a chance that the the guest, uh, the guest may use the the frame buffer that is shared to the host while the while the buffer while the host may be still using it. So, as uh, as you can see, this is the synchronization problem, and uh, we uh, figured that this uh, needs to be solved. And one way we found out that was uh, uh, relatively easier to implement is via sync objects. So. Um, 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 I'll be talking a little bit about sync objects in the next slide. So basically we create a sync object um, after the uh, the blit is done um, by the UI module and then extract a file descriptor from the sync object and have uh, Kimu wait on that file descriptor. And until the file descriptor is signal, the guest would be blocked from rendering. As you can see in the pipeline uh, below the as the buffer is uh, passed on from one module to the other um, so uh, so the creation of sync objects is um, done using egl apis uh, that you see here but and enabled by the extensions the egl chronos fence sync and the native fence sync um, and um, the ui modules uh, also, uh, uh, currently uh, uh, implemented in KMU, such as SDL and GTK that use um, EGL for rendering, can make use of these sync objects. And um, uh, one other uh, advantage um, uh, is that once the 
sync object is signaled, it also means that the host is done using the buffer and the guest is free to reuse it or delete it or uh, whatever it can do uh, with it. Um, and that also ensures that the, the, the rate of rendering by the guest or the guest composter does not exceed the, the host uh, monitor refresh rate, uh, thereby uh, uh, ensuring that the guest is not rendering or wasting GPU cycles. Uh, in terms of the status, uh, all but one patch is uh, uh, still remains to be reviewed and uh, merged. Oh, so the, we also looked at, um, uh, as I said, uh, briefly mentioned earlier, uh, in terms of the copies, um, we found that, uh, that uh, in order to be, um, in order to eliminate all the GPU copies, uh, we would need to use a UI backend that, that cannot be using uh, EGL. Uh, because um, because uh, if you use EGL, then the buffers are allocated by EGL and there's no control, uh, uh, there's no control over those buffers by the application in this case, which is uh, Kemu UI. So, um, so uh, as you as I discussed, uh, using blob resources would eliminate the CPU copy, but not the GPU copy. So uh, we found that the possibly uh, the only way to eliminate this copy is to uh, eliminate the last of the GPU copies is is uh, is by um, simply forward or uh, simply presenting the DMA buff uh, associated with the guest cannot buffer. Um, as a native buffer to the, uh, con converting it to a native buffer and presenting it directly to the host compositor, as you can see. And with the uh, with this, there is no need for the UI module to use EGL or render anymore. So we can directly submit the guest cannot buffer to the host compositor. Um, so some of the advantages of uh, using this is obviously the fact that there will be no, uh, no copies at all. Uh, but uh, however, that is only possible if the, the buffer submitted by the UI module to the host compositor is placed on a hardware plane, uh, which would make it absolute zero copy. But if a hardware plane is not available, then uh, the, com the host compositor has to inevitably, inevitably blit it onto blit the frame buffer onto its cannot buffer. Um, so uh, with this UI backend, the maximum number of copies would be uh, limited to one, the inevitable blit if there is no uh, hardware plane available. However, there are some drawbacks with this module, with this new Wayland UI backend. That is, um, this its effectiveness is essentially limited to integrated GPUs only, uh, because if you use discrete, then um, there is uh, the local memory and there needs to be uh, blitz or copies done from local memory to system memory. Uh, and also the fact that um, the guest compositors need to do double buffered rendering, which uh, most of the VLAN based compositors do, but some ex older X based compositors do, uh, still don't do it. Uh, and obviously you cannot draw window decorations like menus or, uh, 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 or other buttons. Uh, in terms of the status, um, we already have a proof of concept uh, that is working, but uh, we found that um, there is this massive overhaul uh, that is um, uh, underway uh, associated with the UI modules, particularly the implementation of Dbus. So after that work is done, this UI backend can be, uh, patches can be uh, reviewed and uh, uh, hopefully merged. In terms of summary, um, the DMA buff, uh, uh, as Sina discussed, um, the DMA buff exported by the pass-through GPU, uh, in order for that to be shared, the PV-based solution which uses whatever GPU is the most uh, efficient and uh, the generic uh, uh, way for, uh, for doing that. And uh, as I discussed, uh, blob resources, you, the usage of that, blob resources feature would eliminate CPU copies, but in order to uh, eliminate all the GPU copies, except for one, we, were, we would need to use the VLAN UI backend. 
uh, lastly, um, in terms of acknowledgements, I'd like to re uh, thank uh, Jared and Daniel for providing feedback and ideas. Thank you.